Riveting content, empowering your life. Welcome to The Sphere. This episode is sponsored by Houston Housewives of Finance. For more information on increasing your cash flow, becoming your own money manager, and to schedule your complimentary personal finance strategy, contact the Houston Housewives of Finance today at 1-844-700-4463. Elite Dental Wellness At Elite Dental Wellness, Dr. Ashandra Batiste understands that one of the biggest obstacles is dental fear. The vision at Elite Dental Wellness is to ensure every patient is treated with respect, ultimate care, patience, and love. Call us today to make an appointment at area code 713-789-8680. Looking to advertise? Join the Sphere's vast demographic reach of thousands of people all over the world. Send an email today to advertise at the sphere.tv or call us at area code 832 772-7789. Welcome back to A La Carte, your premier cooking show. I'm your host, Chef Jones, with Good Meal Deals, Personal Chef Services. You can find me on social media, on Instagram, Good Meal underscore Deals, or you can find me on Facebook, Good Meal Deals. You can even check us out now on our new website, goodmealdeals.net. Um, get ready to listen for some good food tips and news. And I'm about to pass it over to my girl over here. What's up? Hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm your host, Chef Lorinette with Helping Hands Food Delivery, um, biggest, boldest flavors, freshest ingredients, uh, f food delivery and catering. There we go. Mm -hmm. So in the Houston and surrounding areas. <laughs> 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 so welcome to another episode of A La Carte um, on the show. As always, we bring you guys a couple of different things, uh, food based news, industry, uh, things that are going on, tips and techniques in the kitchen, safety, education and recipes for good food. Oh, yeah. So. As always, we're so happy to have Chef Robin back today. I'm back, y'all. She's I'm back. back. She's I was back. out temporarily, but I'm back. <laughs> so we're so happy she's here <laughs> to join us. And hello to all of our Facebook Live viewers. Hey, hey. How are y'all doing today? All right. Press them likes and share button. Go ahead and share at the beginning so they get this good 15-minute right? You know, sip intro. Oh, come on. <laughs> so as always, we, um, we, we have a couple of things for you guys. The food-based news this week is kind of... I don't know the word. Dis I don't know if disappointing not, is the word. Unbelievable, yeah, unbelievable. maybe. Unbelievable. I was going to say yeah. not disappointing. I was pretty shocked. Um, you wouldn't think about this. Our word. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then we have some pretty cool safety tips. And our recipe today is mm -hmm. mom's meatloaf. So meatloaf. something simple, but we put a little a la carte twist on it, and we think you guys are going to love it. So. Oh, yeah. Back to the devastating news. Mm -hmm. Devastating. Dun, there dun, we go. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Kroger. <laughs> Kroger. Kroger, Kroger. Mm. Kroger's in the news. They had a recall. Uh, 17.7 yeah. tons, over 35,000 pounds of beef has been recalled from Kroger due to potential plastics contamination. Mm. So I'm I'm shocked. I am I was in disbelief when I saw this. I've never seen Kroger really in, in the, the news, news for anything bad. Anything. They're I like mean, the Chick-fil-A of grocery stores. I mean, you could say stores. this is like bad, but it's not like bad. It's yeah. plastic. So. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It's not like a bacterial so that's thing. A good it's thing. not so contamination. It's just a plastic. It's, it's more of a um, physical contamination yeah. instead of, you know. So, yeah, it's it's... It's non-compliant and it's probably bad because of user error. Maybe somebody missed something on the machine or whatever the case may be. Obviously, yeah. it's still harmful to anyone who's trying to consume these things. Mm -hmm. But I would say at least on the safety, food handling and preparation side, like, whew, at yeah. least it wasn't least salmonella, it wasn't bacteria, salmonella. Or something no like that. No harmful bacteria. So that's a good thing. Yeah. We can get them a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> get it together, Kroger. Get it together. Um, there was a list of the states that they have Sh shifted to yes okay, yes luckily okay. texas was not one of those states <sighs> so, y'all for yourself okay y'all can go to kroger a north carolina food processor is the one who had to recall <laughs> the 17.7 tons of ground beef uh some of it was distributed at kroger stores and it was under the kroger private label that they were dispensed so 
uh, nearly 36 pounds of raw ground beef processed at this facility was contaminated with a hard plastic piece of something. It was something, a blue plastic piece. Wow. And um, blue hard plastic, so a customer found one of these blue hard plastic pieces in their meat, and that's how it, you know, became an issue. So it was sold was in the after. Pro- you think it was after it was cooked or, like, before cooking? I have cooking? no idea. I, I didn't see that. Wow. Um, the department says there have been no confirmed reports of adverse reactions or, you know, getting sick or anything like that, which is good. Um, it was sold in a variety of packages, which were shipped in Virginia, Indiana, and sent to retailers, um, Kroger stores in North Carolina, Virginia, Indiana, Illinois, and Eastern West Virginia, as well as for Food for Less and JC stores in Midwest, which we don't have those here in Texas. So mm-hmm. um, these the ones that were distributed were sold between April 9th, and they had a sell-by date of April 9th. So Kroger did make a statement saying that none of those um, containers were still in the stores because they have a mark number. Yeah. So it's like a tracking number for the so store. So they did. Y'all. So that means apparently y'all bought them all. So all my <laughs> Chicago people that's tuning in, make sure y'all check y'all meets. meets okay, yes. Okay. At Kroger's. So um, the good thing is they're not in the store, so they're not still selling it. They're not putting more of that product out. The bad news is they were in the store and they're all gone. So that means they've been sold already. Yes. Um, the good news is it's not bacteria, handling, safety, This is something food more hazard. that if you pay attention when you cook it, you could probably catch it. You know, I still wouldn't eat it. But I still wouldn't eat it because you don't know what that plastic has touched. Exactly. You know, it could be contaminated with a chemical or... Or it could have smaller anything. shards in shards it. Shards in it, yeah. So anything, um, they had premium Angus beef was on the list, mm-hmm. um, a couple of other different Kroger private label brands. So I would... If you have any ground beef from Kroger, I know it says it was sold in those other regions, but just as a safety precaution, if you have any ground beef that was purchased from Kroger, I wouldn't eat it. I would just I would, check it out anyway. I, mean, yeah. I know we in Texas, but you never know. You never know. You never know. Um, <laughs> Probably so. slipped a little package over this way. Other ones went to the Midwest. You, you just never know. <laughs> so what we're going to do, mm-hmm. we're going to talk about um, beef safety and handling and yes, just is, beef and meat in general. So that's yeah, going to be our this cooking is tip for this week. Very serious, especially when it comes to ground beef. Exactly. As far as the temperature and all of that goes, this serious. So. so, like we said, this was more of a physical contaminant, but we're going to talk about more so after you purchase. So, this is actually a picture for everyone who's watching. This is a picture of the safety label that is on every pack of ground beef in every grocery store, not just Kroger. Safe handling instructions. Mm. I say that to say they put it on every pack because it's super important. So, I'm going to read it verbatim, okay? (laughs) This product was prepared from inspected and passed meat and or poultry. Some food products may contain bacteria that could cause illness if this product is mishandled or cooked improperly. For your protection, follow these safety handling instructions. One, keep refrigerated or frozen. Thaw in the refrigerator or the microwave. Two, keep raw meat and poultry separate from other foods. Wash working surfaces, including cutting boards, utensils, and your hands after touching raw meat or poultry. Three, cook it thoroughly. Four, keep hot foods hot. Refrigerate leftovers immediately or discard. So, okay. a couple of things that we have talked about on a la carte uh-huh. several times. Thaw your food in the refrigerator yeah. or the microwave. We gave you some alternative options, which we were r- running water. but Those are the two main ones, refrigeration, microwave. And a lot of people go to the microwave, but you got to also make sure when you microwave, you have that to cook. That you're not cooking. You got to cook that right after. I mean, yeah. you can't thaw it out and like, oh, okay, and I'm going to make sure it's wait. on defrost and not cook. cook. <laughs> You got to type in the pounds, you know, how much meat you defrost yes. and then, you know, right after that, you got to cook it because it's already in a potentially as it is, you know, exactly. the temperature is already at a critical stage. So you want to mm-hmm. make sure. You We've also discussed nobody. storage, <laughs> mm-hmm. how you store your foods. Um, I mean, just a long list of items. Mm-hmm. And I make the point that they put this on every package. It's not like one big sign in the grocery store. It's on every, every package. package. Every package of meat. I mean, everything that needs to be handled properly from meat to uh, any kind of meat in a store. Meat, poultry, chicken, dairy. seafood, dairy. And it's because it's that important. It's that important, but a lot of people don't read. Yes. You know, I was shocked. I know this is going to be a little off, but I was shocked because I just look. People don't pay attention to expiration dates on eggs either. Girl, <laughs> I do. 
I do too. It's right there. You see it, and that matters. And it's also. there for a reason. So you have to realize <laughs> that this food in the grocery stores, things aren't like they were, mm-hmm. you know, years ago, decades ago, when our parents were cooking and shopping. They aren't like they were just five years ago. The every They're food. Not. That's in the the grocery store, whether mm-hmm. it's fresh, boxed, pr- or whatever. They've preserved it in some way. Yeah. So fresh produce, it has to be preserved and transported to the grocery store from wherever it it's coming from. Um, fresh meat. Everything. everything. Everything has some type of preservative. Those preservatives are chemicals. Mm-hmm. Those preservatives are items that change the... I don't you know, say the molecular composure composition. But they they genetically they, modifying. They a lot alter of stuff. it exactly. Yeah, so, so you have to when they tell we, you we talked about this. It's gonna expire on this day. You better believe them. Best believe <laughs> it's gonna expire. It's on gonna this gonna expire because you know all the preservation that they put on it is just gonna you know it deteriorates over time. It does, and so that's why we give y'all these hacks for making stuff like even our previous episode i know i'm so off because i haven't been here y'all but i have episodes you know keeping fro- uh, the strawberries fresh mm-hmm. and you know just we even talked about the stickers on products at one yes, time and what they mean what they mean and let y'all know if it's genetically modified and all of that i mean so people i think a lot of times people visually grocery shop versus um having that knowledge you know to exactly. back it up you know, educationally you're just like, oh, shopping i'm going to get some food like I'm they visually hungry. shop they look at it <laughs> oh that looks good that look good but you don't really know how good it is. You don't know if it's genetically modified. You don't know yeah. if it's contaminated. You don't know. Mm-hmm. You won't know if it's something contaminated because, I mean, you you just don't see it. Yeah. So, I mean, you have to you have to read. You have to know what you're purchasing. You, you have do. to know what you're searching for. You have You have to understand... The products, basically. Understand y'all products. Understand the products. <laughs> um, but speaking of understanding, we want to let you guys know that this portion of the show is sponsored by the Houston Housewives of Finance. Oh, yeah. Understand your finances. It's important, y'all. <laughs> Did you know that only four states in the United States offer financial education? 33% or more than 77 million of Americans don't pay their bills on time. 39% of Americans carry credit card debt from month to month, and 39% of adults say they don't have enough savings. Don't become one of these statistics. Let Houston Housewives of Finance advise you on increasing your cash flow and becoming your own money manager by scheduling your complimentary personal financial strategy. Contact Houston Housewives of Finance today at 1-844-700-4463 or email us at info at HoustonHousewivesOfFinance.com. Ask how you can participate in a complimentary financial literacy workshop near you. Houston Housewives of Finance are the new faces of the new age of financial services. Oh, yeah. So, so we definitely want to make sure we're understanding our finances. Understanding our food, our finances, understanding everything. Everything yes. has a purpose, y'all. Everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But with that being said, we are now moving on mm-hmm. to giving them just, you know, we already told them what we was making. Yeah, meatloaf. Our meatloaf. meatloaf. So that was a little surprise. <laughs> surprise, surprise. So we're going to go into a little more detail um, before we sign off on our Facebook Live, a little more detail about meat and safety handling tips. Yes. So we gave you guys um, the safety tip. Now we're going to talk about techniques and how to actually do that. Mm -hmm. So this is something we found online. It's a great resource, uh, Mastering Your Meat Preparation with Safe Food. So we talked about the safety as far as purchasing it. Now we're going to talk about safety and preparation. Mm -hmm. So one, buying your meat. Number one, make sure you look for the expiration date. Use by <laughs> sticker, y'all. It'd be right there in y'all face. Like, use by this date. Um, you can use it by that date mm-hmm. or you can freeze it by that date and preserve it for a longer time. But if you don't freeze it by that date um, or use it, it needs to be thrown out. Another thing, which is a huge pet peeve of mine, when you are at the grocery <laughs> store and you're checking out, make sure raw meats are packaged in a separate bag yeah. from your ready-to-eat food, and oh, then yes. each individual meat needs to be inside in a, of a plastic, a plastic bag. Yeah, that's what I was say too. They give a lot of people don't pay attention to that. Yes. Go to the store. You know how you go in the produce section, they give you bags, they give you those same bags for meat because it's con- that package can be contaminated just from, from the the blood. the. the um, butcher packaging it can uh-huh. be contaminated the plastic carries yeah. contamination so that's why they do that so f- meat inside of a clear plastic bag and then each component each different meat inside of yeah. its own clear plastic bag mm-hmm. and then those bagged meats inside of a separate yeah. grocery bag to take home 
Um, so now storing meat, we talked about this before. Make sure you put them into the fridge as quickly as possible when you get home or the freezer. Um, always store, store your raw meat and poultry in clean sealed bags or containers. And raw meat needs to be on the bottom. Cooked meats need to be separate on a separate shelf and they need to be up top. Um, make sure you follow the instructions on any of the meats. And if it's after the use by day, throw it out. Oh, yeah. So cooked meat on top, raw meat on bottom, mm-hmm. different shelves. Different shelves. Um, when you're preparing the meat, make sure you always throw the wrapping bin, the container, the white foam, the plastic, everything. Throw that away immediately and then clean the surfaces if you set it on the counter or the cooktop or whatever the case may be. Okay. Oh, yes. Another thing, mm-hmm. so a lot of people save the plastic bags from the grocery store. Mm-hmm. The reason you put the meat in a separate one, throw that bag away, away. because yeah. it has touched the meat. It's touched the meat already. And yes. you know when they combine all your ingredients together, and uh, you keep those bags and it's, you oh, put it under my sink and boom, it's sit there out of temperature. Now that bag is contaminated. So and the bacteria has been growing. It's been growing. You can't see it. So when you touch it, oh, I'm going to go in there and get a bag and... Boom, put this in there and you trying to maybe put something in the trash and then you cook and you go back like, oh, okay. Yeah. So you, you can contaminate it. You can spread germs easily. So mm-hmm. make sure you're, when you're purchasing, you're checking out correctly. When you get home, there's nothing wrong with saving your, your uh, grocery bags, but the one that had meat in it needs to be mm-hmm. thrown out. Yeah, you got to throw that one away. All right. <laughs> so we're going to finish the, um, the last few tips. Mm-hmm. Um, which meats can be eaten rare? Uh, <laughs> beef. Steaks, whole joints of beef, lamb chops, and whole joints of lamb are the only ones that can the be eaten only rare. Ones, y'all. And that'll be like a tartar. Yes. Um, all meats can carry harmful bacteria on the outside and the inside because some of when they cut the meat, the knife can have something on it, so on and so on. So you have to make sure you're cooking it properly. Mm-hmm. Um, which meats must be cooked all the way through? Poultry, pork, roll joints, burgers, Sausages, chicken nuggets, kebabs, kidney liver, and all types of offal, and any meat or fish that has been minced or skewed. Okay? Mm -mm -mm. And that's because you put something through the meat, a foreign body, like a skewer. You put a skewer through the chicken or the beef. It needs to be cooked all the way through. And then how do you cook them? Obviously, um, low and slow in the oven, maybe high heat on the grill, and then use your thermometer to make sure that they're cooked properly. Oh, yeah. So pretty simple i mean we say simple it just takes a little bit of extra effort from what you're used to doing to extra make sure effort and just making sure you have the right tools that you need to do it mm-hmm. like having the thermometer in your kitchen all those little tools they matter and they help you in the long run yes so being prepared, being prepared so y'all. make sure you have the right tools <laughs> and you're prepared for the kitchen also make sure you are utilizing the right tools and you're prepared by sharing our facebook live yes <laughs> that's how you, y'all do that yes you have to be um following us sharing the the Facebook lives and all of the above so all of our Facebook live viewers as we sign off we want to ask you to please subscribe to our show on all major platforms including iTunes SoundCloud Google Play Stitcher iHeartRadio Spreaker I mean we're everywhere please subscribe to our show review our show in iTunes with constructive feedback Share this Facebook Live post and the entire show with your friends and family, and then donate to our mission to bring enriched and inspiring content each and every week. And you can donate at www.thesphere.tv slash donate. Oh, yeah. So. So make sure y'all get on that. Thank you again for tuning in with us. If you want to continue watching us, you already know what you got to do. Hit that subscribe and continue seeing the tea for the day y'all so. yes ma'am so we are going to head into our recipe for the day oh yeah it's a pretty good one i think it's really good it's yes. really good just depends you know with me i'm starting i ain't even gonna go there with it because she can like it she go again she go. With i can only imagine what she was gonna go with this guys. something with the meat how huh? you know so we um are making <laughs> mom's meatloaf okay mama's meatloaf uh-huh And we have a couple of different options for you guys, Um, different types of gravies and and, and sauces and different ingredients and obviously our good, better, best. I think this might be a pretty good, good, better, best today. The really, really good, good one. Yes. Like, all right. We talking about meat, (laughs) though. This is classic. So So in the traditional, (laughs) we would use ground turkey, onion, garlic, diced tomatoes, bread, and eggs. Um, You can use ground beef, but in light of what's going on... (laughs) And our preference, we use yes. ground turkey. Yes, we did. 
The better way, the fancy way, you can use bread crumbs instead of sliced bread, mushrooms, bacon, and cheese. Y'all know I love my bacon. She love her bacon and that butter, y'all. Bacon and butter. And then the best way, um, tomato sauce, cauliflower, and quinoa. So hmm. we'll talk about how we can integrate those ingredients. Of course, of course, especially with the quinoa. I already got away in yes. my mind. Yes. You know, having a whole quinoa meat. That's loaf. what it was. That's what it is. You still can use the ketchup and all that. And yep. Come on. Ketchup. Cauliflower gravy. for your mashed potatoes. Exactly. It's just working in my mind, y'all. Exactly. Y'all, I know, I know this. So. But before I even continue with that, mm-hmm. I do want to let you guys know that this portion of the show is sponsored by Elite Dental Wellness. You got to get them teeth right if you're going to eat this meatloaf. So at Elite Dental Wellness, our vision is to create a welcoming practice that will offer exceptional dental care in a lifetime of dental wellness. We are committed to the finest possible oral care and overall health and well-being of our patients. Elite Dental Wellness is built upon a foundation of integrity, expertise, and service. Through our commitment to modern dentistry, continuing education, and friendly atmosphere, we strive to make our patients feel that they are part of our family. Dentistry can be scary, daunting, and uncomfortable, but Dr. Baptiste and her team works tirelessly to ensure your comfort. Make your appointment today with Dr. Sandra Baptiste at Elite Dental Wellness by calling 713-789-8680. And as I always say, when you do call, make sure you say the sphere so you can get that 10% off because it goes a long way. Mm-hmm. It'll help you to make sure you're ready for that meatloaf, okay? <laughs> like, <laughs> although it's soft, but hey, when you eat soft stuff, it hurts your mouth too because your teeth might be sensitive. You oh never know. God. Here we go. Sensitive teeth. <laughs> So, in our traditional way. So, first, let's address the sauce because Mm -hmm. there are two different types of sauces that you can put on a meatloaf Mm -hmm. or two that I think are traditional in southern cuisine. Either a tomato sauce or a gravy, brown gravy. I like gravy. I prefer brown gravy. I love gravy. So, since we're on the same page, (laughs) the sauce that we were referring to is brown gravy. And then that's why we have tomato sauce as the healthier option Mm -hmm. um, on the healthy way because the brown gravy is flour, water, oil, and butter. Yeah. Which is not exactly (laughs) healthy. (laughs) But it's tasty for sure. It's very tasty, y'all. So, we we definitely... We're we were referring to we were gravy, it. brown mm-hmm. gravy in the traditional and tomato sauce base on the healthy version. Yes, tomato. Now, you don't get me wrong. Own. You can get a healthy a healthy gravy where it's vegetable base using a vegetable broth. Now, you can do that, but tomato, we're going to keep, we keep it at tomato. Do y'all see my eyes? Like, we're going to keep it at tomato for y'all. So. Can I? Can I roll them any harder? <laughs> it's always so many Vegetable alternatives. Broth, you need some flour and some butter. Oh, you could still use the flour and the vegetable broth or the vegetable base. Like you can have a mushroom gravy. Like it's yeah, so many yeah. different alternatives. We talking about grandma's gravy. This that's, is mama's. I know that's a classic. Classic. Mom's meatloaf. That's what mama wants. That's See, right. It's, <laughs> I'm gonna get her right one day, y'all. That's who my mom wants. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, ma'am. <laughs> so with the traditional, um, it's a really simple recipe. One bowl, one mm-hmm. you can actually make it in the dish that you're gonna um, cook it in. So, oh, yeah. short list of ingredients with the um, better options with the bacon and cheese. Yeah. So you can make a stuffed meatloaf. We have done that before where yeah, we delicious. made the traditional meatloaf and then stuffed it with cheese mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. or wrapped it with bacon. Yes, we have. And it's so good. And you can still put the gravy on it, too. Yes, you can. So um, <laughs> I've, I've definitely done the bacon-wrapped meatloaf. And then you, at that oh, point, I you know. can do a barbecue sauce oh, as well. Oh, I know. Love with that. the bacon, the sweet, the tangy, the salty. So My good, goodness, y'all. It's so cheap. good. We be cooking so good over here. I still yes. remember that day <laughs> when we made that meatloaf wrapped in bacon. Yes. It's so good. Yes, 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 yes. Mm. So, you have options, okay? Um, it depends on how fancy you want to be. Um, like we said, traditional, basic meatloaf, quick. I mean, 30 minutes to an hour in the oven. Dinner mm-hmm. will feed a, a large family or lots of guests. And it's tasty. It's, it it's is flavorful. So tasty. If you need that extra mm, if you want them to be like, girl, you made that. <laughs> Let's stuff it with some cheese and wrap it in some bacon, okay? We just need yes. an extra 15 minutes for That's the bacon to render out. 
Or if you're trying to serve this as like a party dish, you can use a muffin tin and bake them yes. as little yes. mini meatloaf cupcakes. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but it's, it's mini. Make sure you get the mini cupcake tins. The mini. We ain't trying to have no big. Some big fat ones. <laughs> get the little bitty mini They're little ones. mini cupcake little bite tins. Size, and you could top them off with that. Put a little piece of bacon on the bottom of the pan and mm-hmm. stuff the meat inside. Fancy. Top it off with some gravy, you know. Yes. And then there's the healthy side, of course. I actually (laughs) made this, well, we made this one once. And I was surprised. So we made meatballs, which Mm -hmm. were quinoa meatballs. Um, Quinoa and brown rice. Yes. So they were meatballs, but I figured as a meatloaf, it would be just as good. Just as good. So we had a um, a meatless meatloaf, Mm -hmm. basically. Meatless meatloaf. Come on, y'all. Preach. So you would use the same base ingredients. Um, we have the cooked quinoa. You have to fully cook it. So it's cooked quinoa. Mm-hmm. You can use brown rice as a filler instead of meat. Yes. Use your egg and your breadcrumbs, and you have a meatless meatloaf. Meatless meatloaf. And you're still going to season it the same. Um, same kind of sauces. You can yeah. set the same way. It's because like, quinoa is essentially, it's a grain. It's a rice. It's going to take on the flavor. So you can still do tomato-based sauce or the um, gravy sauce. Up to you. It don't matter, y'all. Now, you, if you do decide to do the cheese, at that point, I would do a white cheese, not a yellow cheese. Yeah. Um, More I'll, like a fresh, I don't know. I was thinking mozzarella. I was, yeah, a white cheese. Mozzarella would be good. Mozzarella would be really good. Now, with the stuffed meatloaf, when we were talking about meat, we were referring to like a cheddar, a sharp cheddar, because that'll oh, yeah. combat the, the beef and the pork. Yeah. I can so. see it in my head already, you know, yeah. using the fresh mozzarella cheese, and you got the healthy tomato instead of the gravy. It'll and be That would be really the good. The fresh parsley on it with the quinoa and the herbs that you, it's, it'll be the bomb. Yeah. So I can taste it right now. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can use, you know, quinoa comes with different colors. So you can oh, get yeah. um, either the tricolored mm-hmm. to help with the, the color of the sauce. Or you can do the, the traditional white, which mm-hmm. would blend in with the brown rice and the breadcrumbs. Hey. So it's just up to you. However you want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think black would be good. <laughs> no, it looks so scary. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the black Bake would be good. Baking the oven is going to get a little dark. Or even off. the red may give you the illusion of meat because it has a color. Yeah. So, yeah. so I think red or white. Don't shoot for black because you might scare yourself. You yeah. might not even want to eat it. Somebody <laughs> might think it's burnt and it's not burnt. It's, it's just, just black quinoa. <laughs> so funny. And it got to kind of crisp a little bit in the oven, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you guys have choices. You have <laughs> options. We have good, better, best. We have traditional, fancy, and healthy. Mm-hmm. And this is mom's meatloaf that can go so many ways. So, so many different With the ways. a la carte twist on it. Of course. So always, like we tell you guys, make sure you are getting your recipes. Like mm-hmm. we tell y'all this each and every week. So all our faithful subscribers out there, you guys already have a whole a la carte book. I mean, like a whole book. A bondy, you went got the little plastic little printed out, put it in there, so you could just, oh, yeah, I remember this recipe. <laughs> so you already know what you're doing. But, of course, that always brings me to this portion of the show that is sponsored by The Sphere. Are you starting your business and looking for a place to advertise? Do you have a need to reach out to thousands of people across the world to build your brand or sell your product? If so, get your product placement and advertising needs handled right here at The Sphere. We offer a wide variety of content delivery platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, YouTube, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. Plus, we have a vast demographic reach within the United States as well as modern countries across the globe. Our enriched content and inspiring dialogue coupled with your strategic ad is surely to hit the mark every time. So give us a call today at area code 832-772-7789 or send an email over to advertise at the sphere.tv. You don't want to miss this. This is a great opportunity. You know, I kind of feel like summertime is the prime time. A lot of people are going to be more... They're going to be outside and on their phones and on iTunes and all these major platforms. So you want to use, you know, advertise at sphere.tv mm-hmm. to get your product out there. I mean, and you want to subscribe so you can get your recipes and be ready. Mm-hmm. You want to have all of the safety tips and techniques. So make sure you guys are subscribed oh, yeah. and um, get your recipe for your mom's meatloaf. Get your ingredients ready. Come on. This is the perfect thing for Mother's Day. Yes, it's coming up. Your yes. mom's meatloaf. Mom's meatloaf. For Mother's Day. I'm I'm just thinking about that now. Mother's Day is coming up, y'all. Yep. She'll love that. So let's head to the kitchen (laughs) so we can cook some mom's meatloaf. Welcome back. 
Welcome back to the kitchen portion of a la carte. I'm your host, Chef Jones, with Good Meal Deals, personal chef service. You can find me on social media, Good Meal underscore Deals on Instagram, and Good Meal Deals on Facebook. And I am your host, Chef Lorinette, with Helping Hands Food Delivery, and you can find us on all social media platforms at Helping Hands Food Delivery. And you can find us in the kitchen today making oh, yes. mom's meatloaf. Mom's so, meatloaf. Special treat, that nice, homey, warm, gives you butterflies when you see it. You know it's going to be good on the I stove. Know, you, smell it a, you smell it a mile away. <laughs> yes. So when you pull up, you know what's happening in the kitchen that day. So, so this is a, a quick um, a quick six option for us that we've gone. We've done quick sixes before. Yes, so today, um, make sure you're subscribed to the sphere.tv. Um, Go on. Click on the a la carte page. Make sure you're subscribed, following us. That is also where you can find the uh, list of ingredients and the recipe. Make sure you print that out or have it open handy so that you can see all of the ingredients that we're going to go over today. Oh, yeah. So we have salt and pepper. We have diced tomatoes, garlic, egg, bread, and ground turkey. Um, for the recipe purposes, you can use ground beef, ground turkey, ground chicken. Um, you can even use meat substitutes. Just be careful of the cooking times like we discussed earlier yeah, because varies. each one cooks differently. The beef is heavier than the turkey and chicken. The meat substitutes are lighter than the turkey and chicken. Yeah, it just depends. So yeah. if you need to refer back to those previous episodes where we if talked about you are subscribed. proper cooking temperatures That's and times. Correct. Yes. That's correct. So okay. with this um, meal, it's going to be super easy to make. Everything's going into one pot or one bowl for mixing and then into one dish for baking. Okay. And we're going to serve it over rice. So we cooked our rice. We did a quick rice, a uh, quick five minute rice. And we cooked that per the box instructions. It's ready to serve. We're going to cook our meatloaf and make the gravy and serve it over the rice. So uh, we're going to get started with our, we used ground turkey again. So the turkey is going to go into the bowl and we're going to add in our egg and the rest of the ingredients. Oh, so. yeah. So first is the meat. So Chef Rob is going to add in the turkey. We're going to season that with kosher salt and pepper. <coughs> Oh, yes. And you want to just be just a little generous with it. Mm -hmm. Just season it because this is the main component of all the seasoning for the meal, of course, along with the gravy. Yes. So, so now we're going to add in our uh, diced garlic. I was going to say diced gravy. That's definitely not what it is. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, you have those moments. <laughs> Yeah, you're thinking about one thing and <laughs> something, something else, else comes out. Usually what you're looking at and what you got in your hand just get meshed together. Now, <laughs> this is the diced tomato, and we're going to add in the tomato juice. Don't take the juice out. We need that juice for moisture in the meal. Yes. Um, we have our one egg, medium-sized egg. We're going to crack that and add the whole egg in, and that's going to oh, help yeah. bind all of the ingredients. Um, as we discussed, you have a choice of breadcrumbs versus bread slices and just uh, rip them into shreds. I prefer the bread slices because it's a little bit thicker than the yeah. bread crumbs. So with the bread crumb being so, so fine, yeah. you're going to have that same texture throughout the your meatloaf. Meat loaf, yeah. So it's going to change the overall texture versus when you add in the bread slices and just kind of rough chop them, um, you get a different textural component. So You do. So we're just going to rip it into four strips and add it in. And it's two Drop slices it per one pound of turkey. And we're using one pound of ground turkey. Um, for today's meal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Looks so good already, and it's not even made yet. <laughs> <laughs> we are that good. We can make raw meat <laughs> and eggs look good. Oh, yeah. So funny. So it's going to look like a lot of bread, um, but the bread is going to absorb the moisture from the tomato juice and from the turkey and the egg. So we want to make sure we put the full two slices in, okay? Yes. And I personally use wheat bread because it gives, it's a different color. It's a darker color. So when you put it into the turkey with the tomato, it doesn't stand out as much as white bread does. Oh, yeah. Um, doesn't change the flavor of your meatloaf at all. It's just a different tech look, com um, color. I think the wheat bread looks better than the white. Yeah, and also another component with the wheat bread, the density of wheat bread is different. Mm -hmm. Of course, because it's the whole grain, mm -hmm. so... It's better with absorbing and holding through cooking process. And then you can get some wheat into your kids. Yes, you can. So now we're just going to mix this all together. You can use your hands and get them dirty. Your choice. Your choice. If you don't want to get messy, then use a spoon or fork. 
this is something the kids can do. You just got to make sure afterwards they wash their hands. Mm -hmm. And during the process, they don't put their hands in their mouth or touch anything where it can contaminate anything else in the area. That was quick. (laughs) Now we're all mixed together. I'm going to let the bread get mixed in there with the tomatoes and so forth. Mm -hmm. And we have our baking dish ready to go. And so we just dump it right into the dish. And you shape it it in the dish. So we're going to do a traditional loaf, meatloaf. Roll your sleeves up. So traditional loaf. It's going to be a little machine. That's because the tomato juice is in there as well. And then the more meat you use, the thicker or higher up the loaf will be. And that also determines your cooking time. So be conscious of that. It varies, it varies. So some people might have a thinner meatloaf, some might have a thicker meatloaf, but I mean, it just really depends on your preference Mm -hmm. of what you're looking for. I mean, I know it's a classic meatloaf, but you don't have to have the thickest meatloaf. It's okay. It's okay. So we're going to cook our meatloaf on 350, (laughs) um, 30 to 45 minutes for a pound, and then um, take it out, put the gravy on top, and another 15 minutes on 350. So we've... um, going to put this into the oven and we already have a meatloaf prepared for you so give us one sec let's get that on out oh yes meatloaf looking good now we've cooked ours and we added the gravy on top there and we are. have our thank you chef robin and we have our rice so ready good. so with meatloaf traditionally like green beans rice you can do a quinoa you can do a couscous you can do i like corn any type of <laughs> <laughs> corn <laughs> with meatloaf corn with meatloaf see she mixed the corn in with the rice with the meatloaf and gravy it, it reminds me of one of them kfc bowls oh my god and i think those are, <laughs> i will not speak badly about kfc and their bowls <laughs> So we're going to just serve it right on top. We've already sliced ours. And like we said, ours was a little wow. bit thinner um, mm-hmm. because we, we shaped it that way. But I'm going to put it right on. It looks so good. Right it's just like top. a meatloaf version of Salisbury steaks. That's what it looks like to me. Yeah. It brings me those kind of memories. Which it actually doesn't look bad. It's I think it's like well proportioned. Mm-hmm. For the amount of rice that we're using, of course, it looks really good. This is our so I'm going to get some of this good old gravy. This is a traditional gravy, flour, water, oil, butter, salt. All the basics. And water. That looks amazing. Delicious. Can't go wrong. I mean, I, I meatloaf looks perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it looks perfect. And the gravy just adds the extra glare and beauty. It's just shining and looking at us. And I got our, our plate a little dirty, but that's okay. It's meatloaf. It gets a little messy sometimes. There you go. All right. All right. Meatloaf. That looks delicious. Let me grab a napkin. <laughs> now, everything is on the plate. On so top you can, of rice. Yes. The gravy. Make sure you give it a it's, Be generous with the gravy and the sauce. And as we said um, previously and just now with Chef Robin, you can always add any vegetables that you want to add. Okay. Um, the ones that go preferable to you. So she said corn or green beans like or corn. spinach or, yeah, spinach I mean, carrots too. even. You can do like a, a pseudo pot roast, if you will. Yes, you can. That's some good idea. Carrots. Also, if you want to get fancy with it, you know, the bacon. Can't forget the bacon. Yes, we did talk about bacon wrapped. Bacon um, wrapped meatloaf. Meatloaf. So. so in that state, when we made our loaf, when we shaped our loaf, we would have just had um, strips of bacon in the dish and then wrap them around the meatloaf. It cooks a little bit longer it does. and at a higher temperature, 425, because you have the bacon that needs to get crispy. So but otherwise, this is the traditional of the good, better, best options of the mom's meatloaf, or the a la carte mom's the meatloaf. A la carte mom's meatloaf, yes. A Another la carte quick has six. A mom, so. Yes. Another quick <laughs> six, easy meal to make for the family that everyone's sure to enjoy. Um, you can do, we did gravy. As we discussed, you can also do tomato-based sauce. Um, from your feedback that we got from you when we asked, the gravy was more popular, so we went with that option. Yes, that's, that's just classic. Yes. Gravy. Meatloaf, rice, gravy. and gravy. That's right. That's a hearty meal right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's a hearty meal right there. So, of course, uh, as usual, we want you guys to subscribe and share and follow us on all our major platforms. iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Stitcher Spreaker, iHeartRadio. 
Hey, all the hotspots. We're all there. All the hotspots. Find us at on the Sphere TV. Uh huh. And then when you go to www.thesphere.tv, make sure you click on a la carte and you're subscribed to the show. You can see all of the recipes, get your list of ingredients so that you can cook with us next week. And also, when you go on social media, the sphere, you want to make sure you're hashtagging a la carte because we do want to see your creations in the kitchen. We're looking each and every week at all of our subscribers when they send us and hashtag us. Absolutely. I mean, we see so many different creations. So, so here's another one. Um, as always, you can find me, Lornet, uh, Chef Lornette, with Helping Hands Food Delivery on all social media at Helping Hands Food Delivery. Of course, you can find me. I got stuck for a little bit, but of course, you can <laughs> find me on social media as well. On Facebook, Good Meal Deals, and on Instagram, you can find me, Good Meal underscore Deals. And we will. We hope you enjoy your meatloaf, and we look forward to seeing you next week.